Now, come on, somebody shout like God's done something for you. Come on, all over. Amazing. What's going on? I'm Daniel Groves. How many of y'all have been in a service with me before? Wave at me. Amazing. How many of you guys have never seen me before? Come on, wave at me. Okay, very cool. I'm wearing my flower shirt. Scratch and sniff. <laughs> hey, I want to give a shout out also to our additional seating. Will you give them a huge hand right now? Additional seating. And Arcadian Cypress campuses. Will you give them a hand as well? What's up? And everybody joining us online. I already said it, but my name is Daniel Groves, and I'm preaching and hanging out with you guys this weekend. Two of my dearest friends, my wife and I love them with all of our hearts. We're in covenant. Pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster. Pastor Jeremy called me and said, man, would you cover this weekend? And I'm telling you, I, it's always a privilege and honor to come here. This is like a second home. For those of you who don't know me, I'm like a weird cousin that shows up to family reunions. Uh, but we have a lot of fun. I've been coming for about three years. Actually, not for about. It's been over three years since the inception. Been coming back and forth. I mean, we absolutely love what God is doing here. I'm based out of Greenville, South Carolina. I'm on the teaching team, worship, one of the worship pastors for John Gray there at Relentless Church. And uh, man, we're doing some amazing things there in Greenville. But before we jump into the word, do anything else, I believe in the foundation of honor. One of my fathers in the faith says, if honor's in you, it comes out of you. You can't fake honor. I wanna honor two people that say yes to the call of God every single day of their lives. Your pastors, pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster. Will you give them a huge hand? Come on, Katie Cypress, additional overflow. Come on. How many of you guys, by the show of hands, God has done something powerful in your life because of Hope City? And, and I take this, and some, yeah, absolutely, one lady in the back, she had two hands and a foot lifted. Like, here's the reality, we're all here today sitting in an air conditioning building, thank God for that, right? Sitting in comfortable chairs, getting to hang out with everybody, making new relationships, iron sharpening iron, because Pastor Jeremy and Jennifer said yes to the call, took on that spiritual mantle, and consistently say yes every single day, and I'm telling you, what God is doing at Hope City is not the norm. Look at the person next to you and say, don't get used to this, it's not the norm. Because I'm telling you, what God is about to do and what he's about to break out over the next year, two years, three years, I'm seeing greater signs, greater wonders, and greater miracles. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. I believe that what God is doing here is not the norm, but you guys are setting the bar all over the country for what a healthy, multicultural, multi-generational church looks like. Seriously, look around the room. This is what heaven looks like. I get uncomfortable when it's just all white people. Y'all can't clap on beat. I'm sorry. I just, no, listen, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're about to kick off, actually, we're kicking it off today, 21 days of prayer. How many of you guys are excited about that? I'm going to be talking about prayer, connecting to God, and faith today. But before I do, I also want to make you uh, aware of something that's pretty amazing. It's a free tool for you. You can download it or you can pick it up today. It is our Pray First prayer guide. It's going to walk you through the next 21 days of connecting to God and how to do it in a deeper way. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing moment. Also, I wanna make mention version, the Bible app folks, they created an amazing app called Echo. Say Echo. Echo, Echo. They created this Echo app. It's free and it's pretty incredible. You uh, put all of your prayer requests in it. So praying for my mom's surgery, uh, that job, that promotion, and you, you load it up with all your prayer requests over the next 21 days, and then it'll shoot you a text reminder. If you have an iWatch, it'll pop up. If, you're, if you have a droid, I... <laughs> apologize for that. <laughs> We're having an altar call at the end for... No, but it'll remind you all throughout the next 21 days, pray for this, and you'll say, God, I just thank you, because the Bible talks about us praying consistently and continually, and we're gonna dive into that a little bit more. I also wanna throw up a quick pic of my family, my wife, my three babies. Yeah, everybody say, oh. I'm married way out of my league. Everybody say hi to Jackie. She's actually watching online. And uh, let's pray, and then we're gonna jump in. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your faithfulness. God, let every single one of us unanimously agree today when we leave that you were in the room. God, we never wanna play church. We never wanna do this out of flippancy or complacency. This is not karaoke Sunday. We came because we gathered in your name. You said in your word in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, that if just two or three of us gather in your name, you would be in the midst of us. So we're thankful today that you are here with us in Jesus' name. Everybody said it. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jeremy said this a couple days ago on his Instagram story. He said, prayer should always be our first response rather than our last resort. Instead of being something we do every day, like breathing, eating, walking, and talking, prayer has almost ended up 
a glass box locked on a wall that says break in case of emergency. Even the world associates prayer with a crisis where we're at the end of our rope and the only thing we can say is help. I think this video actually a lot of us can connect with. You wanna try wasabi? No. You wanna try it? No. Okay. Wasabi. Do you wanna try it? Smell it. Smell it first. Yo, that video blessed my whole life. I watched it a couple days ago, and I'm like, I'm gonna somehow get that into my message. Help. <laughs> Listen, your prayer life will begin to prioritize your life. I love that moment because she's in this place where she's just calling out help. And you know, so many times we associate prayer, we associate what we're walking through. I said this a moment ago, but with a crisis or a storm, the Bible says this in Colossians chapter four, verse two. It says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. I read a statistic the other day that shocked me. This should shock you. This shouldn't be like, well, that's pretty conservative. No, this is a terrible stat. They said across Americanized Christianity, across America, that the average Christian prays 21 minutes a month. 21 minutes a month, and that includes for your food, that includes bedtime, 21, if you break that down over 30 days, 21 minutes a month, when God is longing for connection, he's longing for an intimate relationship with you, he created you to be in fellowship with him, and we're praying 21 minutes a month, I don't believe that stat fits Hope City, come on, I don't believe that stat is true at our Katy campus, or our Cypress campus, or right here, I believe that we're gonna break that statistic apart over the next 21 days. How many of y'all are gonna take the next 21 days serious in the presence of God? I heard the Lord begin to stir in me two days ago and I couldn't shake it. I felt the Lord say, tell him that over the next 21 days, if you'll take this serious, your life will become marked by miracles. I felt that so strong in me that a marriage that seemed like it was falling apart marked by a miracle. That that diagnosis that seemed hopeless marked by a miracle. That financial crisis that seemed like you can't get out of it marked by a miracle. I believe if you'll take it serious because his reality, God is not a forcer. He never has been. He won't force you into this like, you better do this 21 days or else. Like never. I don't know why God sounds like a weird guy from Kentucky. but <laughs> God will never force you. He's not a forcer. He's a filler. If you'll make room, he'll fill every time. Over the next 21 days, you need courage, make room, he'll fill. You need joy, make room, he'll fill. You need confidence and perseverance and fight, make room, he will fill. I was on the West Coast and this uh, group of pastors sent me out with some hosts to go eat and we're out to eat and we're all hanging out at this restaurant and I'm looking around like who's gonna pray? Because I'm, listen, I'm, I know, like I'm looking because if they ask me, I'm looking for somebody that's the hungriest. Like she's pretty hungry, pray. Because she's gonna be like, Lord bless it, Jesus name. Boom, it's done. <laughs> but then you know, there's always that. Well, uh, let's say the gr brother Stephen, and he's like, Lord, I pray for the whole world. Mm, Father God. When you start a, a prayer with Father God at the dinner table, we're gonna be here all day. We're gonna take up an offering afterwards. So be smart about this. I'm giving you pearls here. Find the hungriest person. They're gonna pray the fastest. Okay, moving on. But I'm at this conference, and they asked us to go out to eat, and they weren't blessing the food. Now, I'm not legalistic or... This isn't a religious ritual. We don't do it for symbolic reasons. I just like to bless the food. God, thank you for this food. Thank you for taking sickness far from the midst of us. Thank you that everything we put our hand to prospers today. Thank you that we woke up again and we're breathing, which is proof that you're not done with us. In Jesus' name, I just like that moment. Well, nobody's praying, so I'm like, uh, is somebody gonna pray? And this guy starts giggling. He's like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, what's so fun? Like, I don't fully connect with the California life. Like, even though I'm wearing you know, skinny jeans. And, but I'm like, is anybody gonna pray? And he says this, like it's a good idea. Now if you're taking notes, this is a terrible idea. Do not do this. He said, at the beginning of every year, we actually prayed for all of our meals. <laughs> and all of our groceries. I'm like, oh, there's more. <laughs> like, and he's like, because we don't wanna waste time or be inconvenienced. Man, I could feel 
man, I could feel the, my blood pressure rising because here's the reality. My relationship with God is not out of convenience. It's out of covenant. Come on, somebody. God longs for a relationship with us. Matthew 6, says, seek first. Another translation says, above all else, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. John 15, 5, one of my favorite verses in the Bible says, yes, I'm the vine. This is God talking to us. You're the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce how much? Much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. We have to stay connected to the vine. This is where life flows from God's heart to us. Us, but the truth is we allow busyness and we allow life, we allow the chaos and struggles and we allow fear and anxiety and we allow the enemy to come in and rob us of our time with Jesus so we begin to look at things in the natural, how we can fix or solve our situations. But here's the reality, our hope and our courage cannot be tied to our conditions. It has to be anchored and tied to Jesus. I remember when I was in New Mexico and we were on a worship tour and we had parked our bus at this RV bus park and I sat down at a picnic table really early one morning and I had my guitar and I was just talking to the Lord and there was moments where I was singing and moments where I was praying and moments where I was just listening and I don't wanna hyper-spiritualize this. Like people say God said about everything. Like I'm just really careful about saying God said but I, without hyper-charismatically or hyper-spiritualizing you know, spiritualizing this thing, I felt the Lord show me, a, like it was like a vision. It's the only way I can describe it. You weren't there. Like you're like, oh, I don't know about that. I was there. <laughs> And I saw the Lord show me like a teacup and one of the little saucers, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about? Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about, like a teacup and a saucer. And then I saw a water pitcher, like, like from like the Waffle House, where like they always pour it and it always gets on you. You're like, you just have no control of that pitcher. And I saw the Lord show me that every time that I spent time in his presence, he would come in and fill. The next day, he would come and fill. The next day, he would come and fill, and that cup hit half, and then three quarters, and then it went all the way to the top, and it began to overflow, and it began to overflow on the sides, and it began to fill up the saucer, and the Lord spoke to me and said, see the overflow? And I said, yeah. Yeah, Lord, I see it. He goes, out of the overflow is where I want you living your life out of. Out of the overflow is where there's miracles in your hands. Out of the overflow is where your tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. Out of the overflow, you'll do and you'll live out your life and your purpose and you'll fulfill the call. Out of the overflow, you'll be the husband and the father and the leader and the pastor you're supposed to be. Out of the overflow. Say overflow. overflow. Out of the overflow. And then the residue that was on the cup, that was my witness. So when I walk into a room or I walk into a job or I walk into a restaurant, the whole atmosphere shifts. Not because I was blasting Christian music and people saw me walking out of fireproof. <laughs> he must be a Christian. <laughs> I don't have to wear a Christian t-shirt or a Christian hat that says need prayer, ask me how. It's just the residue because when you've been with Jesus, people can tell a difference. When you've been with Jesus, when you walk into a room, people might actually walk over to you and say, hey, I'm walking through something. You seem like you would pray for me because I believe with audacious faith that there's healing in your hands. I believe over the next 21 days, God wants to unlock purpose in you. How many of y'all want to begin to step into the call and begin to step into the purpose that God's called you to walk in? Seven of you. Come on. How many of y'all want to walk in that? So I'm going to give you a few ways that I like to pray, and I believe these are some practical takeaways. Again, in the Pray First Guide, you can walk through all of these. I think there's seven or eight steps over the next 21 days of what you guys are gonna be doing. This first one that I wanna talk about is actually in the prayer guide. But over the next 21 days, I want us as a church family, number one, to pray the word of God. So that you're not just gathering and just praying random prayers, because sometimes people are intimidated by this. They're like, what am I, what am I supposed to say? God wants to have a conversation with you just like this. It doesn't have to be like, dear sweet Lord of hosts. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be awkward, like, hey God, like, thanks for these shoes. Like, that was cool, right? <laughs> but he wants this relationship, trust equity built with just you and him. So pray the word. This is the thing about praying his word. It is alive. Job 22, 28 talks about decreeing a thing, speaking a thing, declaring a thing, and how it will be established like a foundation under your feet.